Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to be adding a store architecture to our application. We have here an implementation that is already available for Angular. It's called NGRX or Angular Reactive Extensions. If we go here to the monorepo for the NGRX codebase, we are going to find here all the multiple libraries that we will be using in this course. Please make sure to npm install all these libraries and if you are using the starting point for this section, there is no need to do anything else because the libraries are already part of your package.json. You're going to find their ngrx store, this is the core of the store solution, ngrx effects, this is a library that will make it simpler for reflecting the state of the store in the outside world of our application, namely the database or any other third-party service. The router store is going to give us integration between the store solution, the dev tools and the router. We are going to see this in detail how this works. We are also going to use the store dev tools. These dev tools are a browser plugin that will allow us to inspire the store to see what's contained in it. NGRX Entity is a library for loading entities such as for example courses and lessons in a simplified way in our store state and NGRX Schematics. This is an extension to the Angular CLI that will allow us to quickly scaffold some code such as for example reducers, actions or entities in our project. This will greatly simplify the use of NGRX store in our project. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have correctly initialized NGRX schematics. So we're going to switch here to the schematics page and we're going to see that in order to activate schematics, not only we have to install them and save them in our project package.json, but we also have to set here a property at the level of the Angular CLI. This command that you see here, meanwhile, has changed. The correct command is ngconfig. Let's then switch to our IDE and in the terminal, let's apply the correct command. We are going to stop our development server and on our terminal we are going to set this specific property. And with this property set, now the Angular CLI will be able to scaffold NGRX constructs such as for example reducers or actions. Let's then use NGRX schematics right now to scaffold the initial state configuration of our application. You are going to be using the following command that we are going to be reviewing together. So this is our normal ng-generate command, but now we are generating something that is ngrx specific. We are generating the initial configuration for a store. We are specifying here the name of the global application state of our application. This is going to be the data that is getting stored inside the store. It's going to contain both our application data, such as the courses and lessons, but also any UI data that we want to keep in a central place, such as, for example, what is the user that is currently logged on to the application. That's clearly something that we don't want to associate to any given component, but instead we want to make it global. We are going to then specify that this is the configuration for the root module of the application, and we're going to link it here to our application module that we have opened here. So let's go ahead and execute this scaffolding command and see what it does on the file system. We can see that one of the changes was updating here our root module and indeed if we scroll down we have here a new module that was added to our root application module. It's the store module. So we are calling here this static method for root and we are passing it in a couple of configuration items that are available on this new file that we'll have a look in a moment. We are also specifying here if the store dev tools are active or not. So we are going to have the store dev tools active only if we are not in the production environment. So this means that if we are in our development environment running the application using npm start, then the store dev tools are going to be available and we're going to have a look at them in a moment. 
Right now we are going to head over here to this new folder that was created, the reducers folder, and we're going to have a look at this new file that was scaffolded. Let's have a look at it. So as we can see we are defining here several configuration items, the reducers and the meta reducers objects that we're going to go over in detail once we introduce our first reducer, but we can see that we are also defining here a new type. It's called state, we are going to rename it and we are going to call it the application state. So this is an interface type that defines the data content of the store. This will contain things like, for example, courses. That's definitely going to be one of the entries here in our interface. It's going to contain lessons, which are displayed here on the view course screen. And it's also going to contain other things that are not application data. It's going to contain here information about the user that is currently logged in. So we're going to have here another property called off. So this application state interface defines the data structure of the data that is being contained inside the store. The store is going to be emitting to the multiple components new versions of the application state. Right now we have not added anything to the store so that's why this is initially empty. And with this initial configuration in place we have a store service ready to be used in our application. Before going any further and to make sure that we understand what is going on let's inject the store service in one of our components and have a look at it to understand its API and discuss a bit how we are going to use it to build our application. This is coming right up in the next lesson.